Hello students, welcome to the SRBPS Virtual Classroom Program. I am your Biology Educator, Prerna Rathi. So let us start today's class. Today we will be dealing with Chapter 2, Biological Classification, Second Part, where we will discuss Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae, Kingdom Animalia, Viruses and Viroids. Let us start with Kingdom Fungi. What is Kingdom Fungi? It constitutes of a unique kingdom which has all heterotrophic organisms. They show a great diversity in their morphology and habitat. That is, they have different shapes and different habitats. Most fungi are heterotrophic and absorb soluble organic matter from the dead sub substrates and hence they are called saprophytes. In the previous class also we had discussed saprophytes. Saprophytes or saprophytic organisms are those organisms which feed on dead and decaying organic matter. Those that depend on living plants and animals are known as parasites. Parasites can be of two types endoparasites which live inside the body and ectoparasites which live on the surface of the body also certain fungi can be in the form of symbionts symbionts are those organisms which live in a mutual relationship with each other for example it is present in association with an algae and in lichens lichens are equal to algae plus fungi also with the roots of the higher, higher plants forming mycorrhizae. Reproduction in fungi takes place by vegetative means. In vegetative means it, uh, it occurs by fragmentation, fission and budding. Asexual reproduction is by spores called conidea or sporangiospores or zoospores and sexual reproduction is by oospores, ascospores and basidiospores. Fungi is further divided into four categories, the ascomycetes, phycomycetes, basidiomycetes and deuteromycetes. Phycomycetes The members of the phycomycetes are mostly found in aquatic habitats or on decaying wood in moist and damp places or as an obligate parasite with plants. It has an aseptate and synositic mycelium. The asexual reproduction occurs by zoospores, which are motile spores, aplanospores, which are non motile fixed spores. Some of the examples of uh, phycomycetes are mucus, rhizopus, which is the bread fungi, bread mold, and albugo, which is the parasitic fungi on mustard plant. Next are ascomycetes. Ascomycetes are commonly called the sac fungi. The ascomycetes are mostly multicellular, example penicillium or they can be unicellular like yeast saccharomyces. There are, they are normally saprophytic in nature, they are decomposers, parasitic in nature and coprophilus. Coprophilus means dung eating that is they grow on dung. Mycelium of ascomycetes is branched and septate. The mycelium is branched properly and proper septa walls are present. Then the next type of fungi is basidiomycetes, commonly known as the mushrooms, the bracket fungi or the puff balls. They grow in soil on logs and tree stumps and in living plant bodies such as parasites. Example, rust, smuts, etc. The mycelium is branched and septate. It has a proper long branched and septate mycelium. Some common examples of basidiomycetes are the common mushroom that is a garicus, eustilago called the smut, fucinia called the rust fungus. Last are your deuteromycetes, commonly known as the imperfect fungi because only asexual or the vegetative phases of the fungi are known. They don't show basically the sexual phases. When they show sexual reproduction, they rightfully, you know, go to basidiomycetes or ascomycetes like that. They shift to the other forms of fungi. Some members are saprophytic that is feed on dead and decaying organic matter and some are parasitic that is feed on living matter. Some help in decomposition of litter, they help in mineral recycling. Examples of deuteromycetes are Alternaria, Collegiotrichum, Trichoderma, etc. 
now lichens as we've already learned lichens is a symbiotic relationship between fungi and algae lichens are symbiotic association that is mutually useful association between an algae and an and a fungi the algal component is known as phycobiont and the fungal component is called the mycobiont one is autotrophic and one is heterotrophic the algae basically prepares food and supplies to the fungi fungi in turn collects oxygen and various nutrients from the soil far away nutrients and water it absorbs and provides it to the algae, algae so that it can live and perform better lichens are a very good pollution indicator they normally grow only in unpolluted areas pure serene land so if there are no lichens that means that area is polluted let us briefly discuss kingdom plantae because we'll go, be doing kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia in detail in separate chapters kingdom plantae includes all eukaryotic photosynthetic that is chlorophyll containing organisms and which are called plants a few members are partially heterotrophic such as the insectivorous plants and parasites the plant cells have a eukaryotic structure with prominent chloroplast they have a proper chloroplast which has chlorophyll inside it they have proper cellulosic cell wall the kingdom plantae includes algae bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms which we will be dealing in detail in the next chapter next we have kingdom animalia kingdom animalia is again characterized by eu eukaryotic heterotrophic nature they are all multicellular and they do not show the presence of a cell wall the outer membrane of their cells is known as a plasma membrane they digest their food in an internal cavity and store food reserves in the form of glycogen or fat in the body most of them are capable of locomotion now let us discuss viruses and viroids in the five kingdom classification of robert whitaker there is no mention of some cellular organisms like viruses and viroids the viruses are actually the non cellular organisms that are characterized by having an inert crystalline structure outside the living cell they have in fact a cell key that takes over the machinery of the host cell to replicate themselves and killing the host so they don't have their own machinery but they take help of the host machinery the name virus means venom or poisonous fluid and it was given by pasteur dj ivanovsky in the year 1892 viruses can have rna or dna as their genetic material no viruses contains both rna and dna only one of it will be present a virus has a basically has a nucleoprotein and genetic material virus causes various diseases in human beings like mumps smallpox herpes influenza aids etc in plants it causes many diseases like leaf and rolling leaf rolling curling mosaic formation yellowing vein clearing dwarfing stunted growth etc what are viroids in 1971 to diner discovered a new infectious pathogenic agent that was smaller than viruses and caused the potato spindle tuber diseases it was found to be free rna it was nothing but a free rna it lacked the protein coat there was no protein coat as it was found in viruses hence it is known as viroid that is devoid of virus the rna of the viroid was of low molecular weight also in this diagram you can see the structure of a bacteriophage bacteriophage is not a bacteria bacteriophage is a virus which infects the bacteria as you can see there is the head region where dna is present then there is a neck region the collar region sheath and tail fibers are present so we have learnt in today's class about kingdom fungi kingdom plantae kingdom animalia viruses and viroids i hope you all understood what i taught I suggest you all make complete use of the YouTube channel to enhance your learning. So until next time, goodbye, take care.